Hayden, Chad. Hello. Literally, we just got off our fourth Zoom of the day. We've been up since early in the morning and we had a team update call, world update call, and um, since then, like it was really Zoom after Zoom after Zoom, we had our quick taco bite, and now we're here to share with you guys something that has, um, you know, that we have used since we started in this profession. So, but while we're waiting for people to jump on, let us know where you guys are calling in from so we hey, can say Ted, hi to you guys. Um, we are so excited. Myself and Chad right now are here in Cabo San Lucas. That's why I want to say hola, como estas? We are here uh, celebrating um, Father's Day and our, uh, our anniversary as well. Having so much fun. I want to show you guys the view isn't that phenomenal wait let me let me turn it around you guys where we're at but this is what's cool like technology this these days has allowed myself and Chad to be working while in a location of our Beautiful choice like we location. literally have not stopped on zooms but the to be able to sit out here and do those zooms has been Phenomenal. Hi from Temecula, California. We can't wait to come Monier, back. Monir, welcome. What's up, UK? Monir? Hi, Christian. Hey, Spain from Germany. in the house. Florida, I love your hearts and your likes. Irvine. Oh my gosh, I love Irvine. Irvine has, I have a lot of friends in, uh, in California, period. And Hawaii. Hawaii. Aloha. I need to get guys. some of what's that dish that we like in Hawaii. Locomoco. The Locomoco. I love the Locomoco and the Spam Masubi. Ooh. Lisa in the house. See you in Las Vegas. We can't wait to be in, yep. at, in Las Vegas for the, the Disrupt event that we're going to be having soon. But anyways, yep. guys, I know you guys have been waiting to hear um, this topic from us, which is how exactly can you build a name list and what's the importance of it? You know, um, one thing that myself and Chad have realized is that, you know what, um, we have been able to successfully build um, in this profession of network marketing and we just want to step it down a notch to show you guys like to, how to start from the very beginning going back to the basics you know um, I talked about this last time um, when we were uh, on a different call and I said you know what at the end of the day when a computer crashes what do you do mm -hmm. you refresh at the end of the day you know so this is a huge refresh for those who are um, seasoned networkers and also for those who are new in the industry you know it, let's start all the way back to starting building a name list yep. you know for myself and Chad we have built successfully to the extreme successfully built our organization and our business online the majority of it has been online uh, the success that we've had in the past 10 months that we've built this um, it, it we've only had 10 face-to-face -face you know, even hotel presentations or face to face me, everything else has been online. online. But with that being said, I don't want you guys to disregard the fact that at the end of the day, we go again, go back to the basics. You still need to have your names list. You still need to have the personal touch. You still need to learn the skills. Today on today's um, World Update Call, which we do for um, our organization, my dad came to talk and he talked about speed. Yes, speed is important, but skill is what's needed. Without skill, you can't go out to kill it. The reason why I'm saying kill is because he compared it to a cheetah. You know, they have speed, but with, with speed, you can only go so far, but you need the skill set. Absolutely. So what that means is that when we have started with the online accessibility, you know, um, that has allowed everything to skyrocket. However, with that being said, all of us still need skill set. You know, we all can go on Facebook Live, we all can use Zoom, but at the end of the day, you're going to need to make sure that you have the correct skills. And if you guys feel me, drop a little fire ball or fire emoji so I can show this to my dad and say, look, technology, we're all showing you that your amazing nugget was amazing. Yep. Ah, let me see you guys. Okay, so anyways, um, so with that being said, in terms of nameless, this is one thing that we will say. You would never, ever, ever want to prejudge. Never prejudge. Absolutely. If, if any of us were to prejudge, you know, a lot of us wouldn't be here. You know, my mom, for example, she came from uh, Thailand, you know, came to America for the, you know, 
American dream of freedom. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, she was just like a, a restaurant owner or whatever. And she couldn't really speak English at that time. But if someone prejudged her, she would have never started in this profession right. ever. And just last last year, they made five million dollars. Think about that. If someone prejudged her, you know, um, we have so many people who, you know, came from being a teacher to now financially free in this profession. Someone who's been an Uber driver who's finally free in this profession as well. And also myself, I'll probably some of you probably wouldn't want to talk to someone in my position when I was working. I was I had a full-time job, 60 hours a week, six days a week, working in corporate Australia, not in America. And some would think, man, Chad has no time for this. He's busy. He's got a uh, you know corporate role, management role, and just working every day. And why would he want to do anything else uh, but you know do this? Why would it? What? Why would he want to do this if he's busy doing that? So. Never ever prejudge because we get people from all walks of life. I mean, we're, we're go ahead. We're on people have certain uh, characteristics, right? We look for certain key points. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, just like Chad said, don't prejudge because you know you don't know where they are in their life. Sometimes people who are successful want another challenge. You know, we have so many people who are multiple six-figure monthly earners who decide to jump in this, this profession just because they want a challenge or because, you know, at the end of the day, we say, you know, sometimes people who have a lot of time have no money. People who have a lot of money have no time. So you never know. You know, they want something that is different. So don't ever, ever prejudge. And with that being said, we always talk about when you do build a name list, make sure that it's not just five people on your name list that you have more than a hundred. And the reason being is this, I want you guys to clearly see this. Let's say you know, you're know you so excited about the opportunity, you come on board, you put your mom, your dad, your brother, you know, and your two best friends, and you call three of them, and three of them say, you're crazy, you're one in one of those things, what happens? You know, you're like, oh my gosh, more than 50% of people who I've called said no. And then you feel so bad about yourself and you feel rejected. And sometimes that rejection is is sometimes too much to handle. I remember for me, you know, when I started in this profession, I called my best friend. She thought it was crazy. And I literally thought like it was the end of the world. I felt like a crazy person. I remember crying. I remember going to my mom and saying it doesn't work. But why? Because I only had, at that time, I only had three people on my name list. I called one and she's already said no. So literally 30% of my name list yeah. already said no. If you had five, three said no, more than 50% have said no to you. But imagine you had 100. You had 100 people on your name list and three said no. You basically have 97% left to go. Do you mm -hmm. think that yep. you will have posture because of that? So with that being said, you know, the, the ability, it's in this profession, you know, and in any profession in general, it all goes down to your mindset, right? And, to, and your ability to have um, good posture. And, and one way, like it's, it's like that game, that numbers game to work and to just mess with your mind you know when you have a bigger list you have the ability to have more posture when just a few little bit of people say no so that's why it's important to go out and to create a hundred names and don't prejudge literally write everybody on that list down you know right now you guys have Google you can even Google hundred names list and you could see like the different things that will say that your teachers your gardener your doctor your associates other people in the profession Anybody and ever, your family, people when you invited to the wedding, everybody basically. So guys, one of the things that we also tell people about the name list is that you know you want to give them some points, right? You want That's to right. categorize the people by giving them points. So for example, once again guys, this is just a generalization. It's good to start somewhere and not start at all. Number one, we look for five points, okay? The first point is that they're over 25. The second point is that they married. are married. The third point is that they have kids. The fourth point is that they have a house. And the fifth point is to have a job. The reason being is because if you're over 25, you're not really worried about partying anymore. You know, you're trying to think like, crap, what do I do with my life? You know, you're trying to figure out why. And again, we're like we said, never prejudge. But with that being said, once you have your hundred names, as now you want to categorize it 
So you can call the people with the most points first. Yep. That's for to clarify for you guys. And remember, we're going back to the basics. I love doing this because at the end of the day, all of us need to refresh. Myself and Chad, we constantly refresh. So again, we have more than 100 names. On, if you guys understand what I'm talking about, drop a number five out there because I know you guys are probably listening and writing notes. So I like to see the interaction with you guys. And if you guys understand or feel us, you know, drop a number five so I know that you guys are there listening and you guys understand what we're saying. So anyways, you have your 100 names list. Now let's go and categorize it. Number one is are they 25 and above? The reason why you put a check mark next to those people is because like I said, they're not in that partying stage. You know, it, 25 is the age where they start to wonder, what am I gonna do with my life? On top of that, 70, is it 75? 75% 75 of this profession are all millennials and like are in the millennials. And that starts around the age of like, under 35. Under 35. So which which is is why 25 or above you want to put a check mark next to that. Number two, are they married? The reason being is now that when you bring one person on board, it's not just one person, but is themselves and their partner. So that means that nameless is multiplied. So that is also why you want to have someone who is married. You get it's basically two for the price of one, right? Number three is um, do they have kids? The reason why we say this is because now there's more neck in the game. Like they have more reason to why they want to go and build this and build it strong. That's why we always say that you want to make sure that that's another checkpoint that you're putting um, on your name list. Number four is if um, they have a house, again, more neck in the game, more reason why they have to, and they want this to work, an extra source of income to pay the mortgage. Number five is if they have um, a job, obviously because you know you don't want someone who's going to be stressed from your day-to-day -day, um, uh, bills, you know, you want them to, to uh, for financials, and you want them to be able to afford afford this. Again, this is not to prejudge, but it's just to put checkpoints on your name list in order to organize it in a way um, to, to go about talking to your name list. So when you have that name list there, guys, generally speaking, on top of that list is what I call the chicken list. What is the chicken list? When I say, guys, call number one, you'll be like, <gasps> that's called chicken, being a chicken. So that's called the chicken list. But guys, it's about be having that posture and making those phone calls. But remember, Natita talked about this in one of the Facebook Lives earlier, is about that trust and respect. Your goal is to hook them up with someone that has the information, right? So your goal is to hook them up. So when you call the chicken list, you know what? Have that posture. Guys, remember, posture, 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 and have that call with that person and hook them up with your sponsor, with your upline and let them transfer the information from the other person. Invite them to hear the information from the other person. Or if you're a leader themselves, yourself, or you believe in yourself and know that you have that trust and respect from that person in front of you, then we can do that. Now, with every call you make, every single call, it has to come out with <coughs> a good result and a better result, no bad results. A good result and a better result. Now, the minimum that I would consider a good result is by just asking them, well, who do you know? So at the end of the call, there may be a positive yes now, I want more information, or you know, no, not for me, but whatever it is, always ask this question, write this down. The question is, well, who do you know? So let's say uh, Elsa came, Elsa just joined. Hey, Elsa. So let's say Elsa came on. And, and you have to say, good day, mate. Good day. She's her husband. And Elsa, we, we spoke, and at the end I said, well, Elsa, who do you know that you think will be good at this? now? Those questions, not just who do you know, like who do you know that you think will be good at this? The reason why you add that at the end is because they will go through their whole phone book and go, boom, this person. Now, I've asked that question, someone local in my area, someone that lives in Beverly Hills, a friend of mine, went through the presentation and they weren't interested, but I said, well, who do you know that you think would be great at this? They gave me a few numbers, uh, gave me one number, called that person, and from that one phone call, millions, I repeat, millions of dollars of sales was gone through because of asking one simple question. Who do you know that you think would be great at this? Now, guess what? When we're in a different city, like right here, we're in Cabo, right? And we want to go eat. Well, where do you know that it has the best local food? Just ask. The question you don't ask, the answer is always no. Always seek. And, and with that being said, I want you to understand something. You know, myself and Chad, we built 
all of this, like literally even our whole profession of network marketing, we've built everything from scratch because for myself, I was born in California. I moved to Thailand when I was 10 and then I came back when I was 18. Chad was born in Malaysia, moved to Australia when he was eight and then came to, yeah, it stayed there and came to California um, in 2008 or something, yeah, like, something that. like that um, and we literally built this from scratch I went to Vietnamese town like Westminster and I was passing out fires and I kept asking who do you know who do you know who do you know until we got to a super uh, a, a semi superstar who knew a superstar who knew another superstar in Vietnam and we built a huge Vietnamese organization just by asking the question who do you know with that being said um, we, I mean, going into the topic of prospecting, we always say don't go out to prospect necessarily, but prospect as you go. Yeah. So I remember the, the reason the Vietnamese t town came out, I mean, I intentionally, I always intentionally go, just go, right? Like not to necessarily prospect, but I'm always out and about because you can't build your, your name list by staying at home necessarily. You can't, you know? Um, so we're always out and about and we prospect as we go. And so the biggest thing when we go out and prospect, which I want to share with you, if, first off, if you guys are feeling and you like this information because we want to continue to add value to you guys, you know, drop a little, yeah, perfect cash, drop a, a fire thing so we know and we could we could feel motivated to do this constantly for you guys um, we we constantly like to give value to you guys but anyways so in terms of prospecting as we go um, one thing that we always do which has worked marvelous marvelously for us is we will when we see someone you know we always say you you scan the room you're like um, James Bond, right? You, you're calm, like cool, oh, and calm, cool, collect, you know, slide, chill, high, like on point. But you know, in reality, inside of you, you're like Terminator. You're like, rrr, 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 rrr. I'm scanning them, I'm scanning them, right? So that's how we always are. We're always prospecting as we go, trying to look for the sharp, sharpest people out there because you know the sharp people are the ones who know um, the most, most people out there. Anyways, so when we go and touch, and let's say we're at a restaurant, right? We see the sharpest person out there. The biggest thing we will do is make sure that we give compliments to this person. Why? Because for one, you, you accomplish two things. One, you know, you have their attention. Two, you know, they feel they start to feel good about themselves and know exactly why you've talked to them. So for example, when we go out to a restaurant or something, Chad sees someone who's sharp. The first thing we'll say, like, oh, so do you own this place? And they're like, oh my gosh, no, I'm actually just the manager, or I just started, or whatever. But you give a compliment to someone, you don't be fake about it. You know, you speak from the heart, compliment someone who you really believe is is sharp. You know, someone who's sharp and quick, and 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 you know, someone who who you would want to do business with. Um, so, anyways, that's that's oh, it's a dark. Okay. So, anyways, that's the first thing that we would do. Um, is is compliment them lift them up and then secondly we will ask this question and this is something that was really hard for us to is the lighting bad we would we would um ask them a question which i want you guys to write down it was hard for us to figure this question out at first and it was awkward um, at first to ask but this question is this the question is okay so do you keep your business options open. It was hard for us to say that out of our mouth at first, but I promise you that is a question that is going to potentially bring you millions. You know, a lot a, a lot of potential just with that question itself. Hey, so let me ask you a question. Do you uh, keep your business options open? So, okay. Oh, so are you the owner here? I'm like, oh no, I'm not. I'm just the manager. Oh no, I'm not. I just started, but thank you so much. Really? Okay, then let me ask you a question. Do you keep your business options open? Once you ask that question, you zip it, zip it. For those who give, drop me the little zip face emoji. Let me, <laughs> you know what? Let me put that zip face emoji on right now. It's so cool. The zip face, this technology these days. Where's the zip? Do you see it, babe? Yeah, I'm the zip face emoji. Zip face. Sorry, I like doing this. Zip face emoji, guys. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> zip face emoji. <laughs> So once you ask that question, so do you keep your business options open and zip it? And the reason being is because you're gonna you're gonna want to look at your phone and say, all right, then you need to give me your number because no one, we've never met anyone who actually said no to that question. So you say, do you keep your business options open? Yeah, I do. All right, then you need to give me your number. And you just look down. Either you'll probably have your phone now. You don't necessarily have a pen. So just look down your phone. 
and just keep quiet until they give you the number and you're just like, oh, is it 310? Hey, what is it? What was your name again? You know, and you just put it in, that's it. And just say, all right, I'll contact you later. So bam, you already built your name list. You want to continue building your name list. When people say to us that they ran out of their name list, no. That means you ha you're not going out enough. You want to make sure that you're going out, continuing to add on to your name list. Again, that question has brought so much to us by just asking someone, do you keep your business options open? Zip it, look at your phone, keep quiet, and if they don't say anything, say, wait, is air code 310 or air code 626? And you just zip it and put, put that number in. Like that, that was huge for us. Another question we, uh, people ask us a lot is that with the name list now, who do I call first, right? So we gave you the five points. You call all the number fives first. Now within the number five category, if you have 100 people, you might have 30 people that have all those five points. Who do you call first in that list? It has to be based on influence. So call the people with the most influence first and call the people with the least influence last. Now, why am I making this a point? Because human instinct, naturally, you'll call the people that is on the bottom. So write this down, guys. Always recruit up, not down. Because the natural instinct makes you recruit down. So what does that mean? Well, if you come in and you recruit down, guess what? The people you recruit will recruit down. Now, down is not a bad word. Recruit down means basically, you know, maybe the people, uh, uh, the, the experienced people or the Dark. quality of the people. But just know that you want to call the people number five first in the list of the highest influence call them first and have that posture of believing stuff. Everybody have different ways of psyching themselves out before they make a call. Natita looks in the mirror, she practices. No, I do not. Not anymore. Uh, no, like, you know, just, just, you know, just get it revving no, up. No, I literally stand up. Okay, I don't, I don't do that anymore. Like I said, I always talk about doing something so much, being so uncomfortable so much to the point you're comfortable being uncomfortable now. So now I don't do that. But when I first started in this profession, I definitely... I actually, yeah, I would look in the mirror. I would stand up, walk around. I feel like if you're energetic and you're walking around, you're more excited to talk and people can hear your energy. I talked about this last time when in terms of inviting, you know, it's about um, enthusiasm. The last four letters of enthusiasm is I-A-S-M, which is I am sold myself. When you are sold yourself, everyone else on the phone, it doesn't matter what you say. It's not about transfer of information. It's about transfer of enthusiasm. So anyways. So yeah. Uh, for myself, I just, I don't think, I just call. That is the way I get into it. I just don't think, I just call. So guys, this is some tips that we want to share with you guys. It's very important about that name list. We're continually adding people that name list. And the second thing I want to give you all, another tip I want to give you is after that call, schedule in your calendar when the follow-up call is. If the person says, no, I'm not interested, well, call them back in about six weeks. If a person said, look, you know what? I want to know. Then you schedule them straight away. Always schedule them. Even if it's a yes or no, schedule it because it's all about timing. No means not now. It's not no means no. It's all got to do with timing, right? All got to do with timing. If someone came to you maybe at the wrong time, you probably say no to this opportunity, which a lot of you really love. So it's all got to do with timing. So no means not now. There is like a huge boom because there was like people playing Jenga back there. Oh, which um, I let Chad win earlier, by the way. Uh -huh. And I'll, I'll post some photos of that later. But anyways, in terms of um, asking people, just like Chad was saying, asking someone, who do you know? The reason being is because your mentality has to be that those people who you are talking to are your next diamond. They're your next gold mine but they're gonna quit the next day or within the tw next 24 to 48 hours. So what you want to do is dig deep and figure out who they know as soon as possible. That's why it's important in terms of speed. They always say success loves speed. So it's important to get into that name list um, ASAP. So again, guys, you know, um, in terms of the name list, make sure that you have more than 100 because it'll create that posture for you. You know, you want to be able, when, especially when you go and call them, right? And you have your 
you're nameless it gives you that posture in terms of posture as well you know we were just looking out here on the beach the lifeguard um, was out there and then we were talking about those lifesavers right you know those things that you throw to people to save their lives you have to know that you have a lifesaver in your hand you know sometimes when you call you're scared it's it's, it's as if you're calling to ask them for a lifesaver no change your posture around you guys are the one who has that lifesaver to throw that out and you just have to know that at the end of the day you're the one throwing it out it's up to them to grab onto that lifesaver now if they want to continue drowning you know it's it's at least you have done your part in throwing that lifesaver out that's the most important thing that you guys have in mind another thing that has really really helped me is just the whole mentality is that when you do call your name list um, you want again it goes the posture right you want to have that posture and a lot of the times people don't dare to call because they're scared of rejection and I want you to make it very clear in your mind and in your heart that when people are saying no they're not saying no to you they're saying no maybe to the product or to that opportunity just like when someone comes um, to your door knocks on the door and tries to sell Girl Scout uh, no everyone has to say yes to Girl Scout cookies but let's say it was like a vacuum cleaner or like knives or like something right um, that you might not want and you say no you don't you're not saying no to the person who's selling it you're saying no because you don't want that product so stop making it personal you want to make sure that you are making it um, understanding that they're just saying no to that when you start to get yourself get over yourself first off get over yourself you know um, start realizing like work with speed you know and start realizing that you're the one offering that lifesaver it's up to them whether or not they're gonna grab onto that or not but at least you are doing your part of throwing it out there but at the end of the day the things that you learned unless and until you take action you might as well not have learned it so I'm glad that a lot of you guys are loving these tips right now yeah. and you guys are dropping your emojis you know drop a high five for me I'm gonna do a like a what is it called a virtual high five yay I need a virtual yay. fist pump. I want to add one more thing too guys wait uh, I was saying something okay you say then I'll add go um, See, he made me lose my train of thought. But no, okay, I was gonna say success loves speed, but with speed, guys, the reason why you want to work with speed is because sometimes when you work with speed, you have no time to do anything else. You don't care about being rejected because you're calling way too many people. I don't have time. Like literally myself and Chad, no matter what challenge comes our ways, we don't see it because we're like working with speed we're keeping ourselves busy keeping ourselves proactive like right now we're in Cabo San Lucas but we're we've been working non-stop but the great part about what we do right now is our ability to build everything online everything everything and so we're able to literally lay out here at the beach and have our zooms and it's been phenomenal but anyways did I make you lose your train of thought no got I got it you I got, got it. it I got it guys so when you start making any calls guys it's always good to make calls in the morning Right, always make good, good to make calls in the morning so people can make decisions early in the morning and you might be able to see them the same day. So I always tell people, always good to call people between 10 and 12 a.m. in the morning. Now, does that mean, well... Oh, wait, can I say one thing? Yes. Sorry. So a lot of the times people won't pick up your phone call, okay, the first go. So we always call people two times. So just know that. I know sometimes when you pick up the call, you're like, please don't pick up, please don't pick up because you're like too afraid to get rejected. Trust me, that's been me so many times where it's like I call, I'm like, no, don't pick up, let me leave a voicemail or like, and, or like I feel like there's a frog stuck in my throat. But anyways, sometimes they don't pick up the first round. So call the second round because once you call a second round, they're like, oh, this, it might be important. So they pick up the second time. So anyway, sorry, that's yeah. a side note, side note. And for you ladies, you're probably looking for your phone in your handbag, you can't find it, and then I call you the second time, you pick it up and you go, oh, thank God you called back because I was looking for my handbag, right? So yes, always call twice. And like I said, in the call in the morning time between 10 and 12, we love to have early meetings, but don't use it as an excuse. Well, now it's 12.01, Chad said call between 10 and 12. I'm done for the day, uh-uh. Uh-uh, uh-uh, don't look for excuses to lose, look for reasons to win, guys, all right? So 10 to 12 is the best, and I'm gonna take you to the next note, guys, next level. Decide how many yeses and appointments you want and go through the list as fast as possible till you get it. So for example, you say, you say, I wanna get 10 yeses. I wanna get 10 yeses, then what you do? You say, let's start the timer now, boom. 10 a.m. call and see how long it takes you to get 10 yeses. Make a game out of it. Don't be emotionally attached. Make a game out of it. Keep on calling till you get the 10 yeses. 
boom, stop the time and see how long it takes and try to beat it the next day after. Well, why? Because when you make a phone call, you always have have urgency on the call. We talked about this in another training, urgency on the call. So you come up and say, hey, uh, Trisha, how are you doing? Do you have a minute? And they say, yes. And you say back, that's all I have as well. That's all I have as well. I'm going to a meeting right now. I'm about to step in the lift. I don't have much time. I have to pick up the kids from school. I'm about to jump in the shop, whatever it is. Do you have a minute? Yes, that's all I have as well. So go through that invitation process as fast as possible. Get as many yeses as possible. Decide how many you want. Set the time in and go call to call guys. And, uh, and the last thing I'm gonna say is, some of you may say, how does Chad and Natita know all this? Because we've done this for a long time, right? We've done this for a long time. We've learned this from experts. We learned this from other successful individuals. We learned it at major events. There's two different types of thoughts about events. There's some leaders that says, don't go to events because I'm a leader, I'm good enough, you just come to my events. And there's other leaders like what Natina and I believe in is that you need to go out there and listen to everyone, every type of professional out there, every leader, and make sure they're qualified. Just don't go to talk to a speaker, talk to a speaker with results, and even better, talk to a speaker with current results. Current results, not results from back in 1986, all right? Current results. Because if it's back from 1986, they might play on some, what's some 1986 music? Like Madonna, not Madonna, I didn't say that. But play some 86 music, all right? <laughs> anyway, so get out there. Me and the team as leadership, we want you to go and learn from every current leader out there. Improve your, your skills. Iron, sharpen iron. We are not afraid of anyone deciding, you know what, Chad told me to go to this event. I went to this event, I found this person, and this person had brought me into another company. Well, guess what? You have to have this mindset. You do not need anyone. Natita and I do not need anyone. You do not need anyone. If you're in my organization and you went to an event and someone recruited you to another company, I would say congratulations. I'm glad you found a company that you believe is better for you and your family. Because with the skill set that you have, I want you to go out there and win with the skill sets that I have. It's okay. You're not out there to think that you're gonna have a 100% success rate. You're out there to be consistent and to do the daily activities, the little things, the right way so you can win, 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 and win big. Love you guys, guys. Just put everything into action. Take all these little notes and the nuggets. With that being said, our next event is coming up very shortly. Wherever you are, you better go there. I want you to make sure you put priority in events so that you can go and learn from current leaders so you can win and win big. So guys, I, we, we love to be sharing these nuggets with you. Again, we are here in Cabo San Lucas enjoying um, the time while building the business at the same time. Um, but remember, unless and until you do something with what you've learned today, you might as well not have learned it. So I can't wait for you guys to actually build your 100 names list, um, to, to mark them down, to order them down with those five points that we gave you in the very beginning and start actually making those calls or else else you shouldn't have come on here and learned it it's no no point of feeling like motivated and be like oh my gosh that was the best training ever hashtag so amazing you know but at the same time you're not doing anything so get off this Facebook live start making those um, nameless and let's get to work guys guys and before I go I want to say that tomorrow is our anniversary <laughs> eight years of being together love you baby love you. and uh, <laughs> and I want to say is that I love this industry. I really, really love in this industry. We wanted to be good students and apply everything. Think about this. For the last eight years, for the last eight years, I've been every day with this lady over here. Every single day, we are together. Why do relationships don't last long in the outside world is because you're at work every day. You don't get to spend time with the people that you love the most. And I'm so happy and so glad that I chose this profession. Why? Because the results shows that this profession have people that is together with their family every single day. So make a decision, make a change, because there is results in this industry. You see it all around. And eight years, guys, with three beautiful, amazing kids, extra 20 pounds, you can see that, but that's coming off, that's coming off. <laughs> but more importantly is the amount of people that we've met that we've been able to share a little bit to help them uh, in their business, uh, people that we met all around the world, so many lovely people like you guys. And you know, one of the things we love about this 
and I say love a lot is we want to see all you guys meet all you guys and be able to spend as much time with every single one of you guys uh, in this beautiful wall and you got to travel the wall look at that this is so show beautiful you guys it's been made first first off hashtag he's a keeper <laughs> let me show you guys the beautiful view and that amazing guys look at that doing work like it's not just a business from home it's a business from wherever you want to be like this is it never been in a in a company that really represents what this profession should be about. So, all right, guys, we love you. Hope you found value in this. And if you did, please like and please share it. We want to be able to be the light for this profession and to be able to spread um, the knowledge that we've learned, you know, because our parents and, uh, and other leaders and other professionals have passed it down to us. So now it's just about paying it for it. So, all right, love you guys. Take action. Can't wait to see you guys write down in your comments later on that you've done your 100 names list and you've sorted them out. All right, guys. See you N -O -W, later. N-O-W, baby. N-O-W. Oh, now. No, no opportunity, opportunity waits. waits. So, all right, guys. From Los Cabos. Adios, amigos. Adios, amigos. <laughs> Bye, guys.